Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. This is the very first episode of Hear Me Out, and today's guest is Richard Plummer, the National Executive Director of the Canadian Hard of Hearing Association. I'm so excited to have him on and talk about all the things that the association does for people with hearing loss. So let's get to it. Thank you so much for joining me, Richard. Uh, Richard is the National Executive Director of the Canadian Hard of Hearing Association. So we're going to dive right into the questions, if that's all right with you. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to join you and looking forward to the, this new exciting series. Thank you so much. So first off, how did you become involved with the Canadian Part of Hearing Association? Well, I think specifically, you know, I've always had a passion about sort of helping community and uh, the opportunity to join the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association really came because it was an opportunity to engage uh, around the cause nationally. I, I've always loved local community development opportunities, but this opportunity really um, brought to the attention the need and the um, uh, support that was required to really begin to help CHA, which is the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association, uh, elevate its you know, prominence and its ability to affect change across populations with an issue that for many, many decades really hasn't been dealt with uh, very well. So I thought the challenge was a great one. Um, just a little history from me. From me. Now, I did spend six years in the uh, field of audiology as the director of business development and clinic manager for Canada's two largest here in healthcare providers. So that gave me a strong foundation, but also, you know, we all have a personal story and, you know, my mom had hearing loss at, at, at during, you know, the mid stage of life. And I saw the huge impact it had on her quality of life. So all those things tied together. And I decided to come on board and, and join CHA to, to help move its mission forward. That is incredible. Well, thank you for sharing. And I, I honestly do think that when people start to really think about it, hearing loss affects probably someone in their life that they didn't realize. So you are right on that. There is um, a whole chapter that needs to be discovered when it comes to the hearing loss um, world. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about the new website that just recently launched? It's incredible. And what drove that? Yeah, well, again, you know, as an organization, uh, we, you know, we've been doing things very well for many decades. And, and part of that has been our engagement and our, our, our communication with our stakeholders. And so as we've kind of gone through the past five years, we felt there was a need to really remodel, you know, the profile of who Cha is. And so this is one of the pieces, one of the tactics to help us kind of reimagine um, how we move our, our, our mission and our goals forward. And so the website was, was really an opportunity to, to tap into some of the new, very exciting talent that we've brought on board and knowing some of the background and work that you provide to support Cha April and you and, and Morgan and some other staff. It was a real need to kind of rebrand ourselves. But one of the major pieces behind not just rebranding and revitalizing it was to make it more accessible and to add some very contemporary accessibility features to our website that would allow the full complement of diversity to be able to, to you know, engage with it, participate with it, and use it in a way that whether it's plain language or um, you know, supports behind the scenes around how images are described to make sure that we had those contemporary factors into it. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, to the listeners, if you haven't checked out the website, it's absolutely beautiful. And I do think that's a piece that a lot of businesses can take from Shaha is that there's a bigger accessible standpoint than just having a website, you know, the size of your font and the color combination. So yes. I think the association has done a beautiful job with that. And just for our listeners, when we say Shaha, it is an abbreviation of the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association. So that is what we're referring to. <laughs> uh, it rolls off the tongue a little easier. Um, so there are a ton of programs involved with Shaha, and I'm hoping you can tell us a little bit more about them, specifically Get in the Hearing Loop. Absolutely. Uh, um, well, the Get in the Hearing Loop is an example of how we operate as an organization. We're the national office, and so that complements a number of um, chapters or what we call networks across Canada who have more localized uh, community-based programs. 
So the get into hearing loop program is an example where a number of our jaws across Canada were operating in local communities, really working on the whole issue of you know, removing barriers to communication. And in particular, uh, using technology as a way to help sort of provide a solution to public spaces. Because once people have hearing technology, usually in a one-to-one -one or in a close environment, it works very well. But once you get into a public space, something like a hearing aid or a cochlear implant uh, doesn't always work as well because of the, the environment, the space, the acoustics, the, the different noise um, characteristics of that environment. And so the Hearing Loop program is really a way to raise awareness about an existing technology, a Hearing Loop, as well as the, the, the complementary um, device in the hearing aids, the T-coil, that can work together to maximize or optimize the communication experience for people who are in public environments or in you know uh, large spaces where there's communication or events going on and allow them to improve that, that hearing experience. And so we felt that was something that had been done locally, but there wasn't a national collective really moving it forward. So working with uh, some of our, you know, champions such as uh, Juliet Sturkins, who is a, a champion ar around this issue, working with our partner from the uh, USA, um, uh, the Hearing Loss Association of America, and then working with our local chapters, we put together a Canadian version of getting the hearing loop, which is providing resources, awareness, but more importantly, working with the stakeholders to bring solutions and getting hearing loops installed in as many public places as possible in Canada. That's incredible. And it is such an amazing piece of additional technology, because like you said, hearing aids don't always work. And so there are these added little assistive, assistive devices and assistive programs that, you know, can help improve the overall accessibility for the hearing loss community. So that's amazing. Um, so in addition to that though, what are some other things that Shaha is doing to help people with hearing loss or help them with you know, scholarships or employment? Absolutely, well, well, we'll, we'll get to talk about a few of them I think later on specifically, but overarching, I mean, we kind of have three approaches to how we work. We, we really try to raise awareness and start to elevate you know, the, the research uh, around hearing loss, we we try to you know promote the the scope of hearing loss, and we'll talk a little bit about stigma later on. But you know the the the, the level of hearing loss that exists in our society, whether it's mild, moderate, or profound, and and we try to make sure that people understand that it's something that's a reality that you know one in ten you know Canadians experiences hearing loss that affects their level of speech. We see. Um, in youth, an extremely um, uh, new trajectory that's beginning to indicate that one in five youth of the next 10 years will have some level of hearing loss that affects their ability to understand speech, you know, in uh, between communication practices. And I think, you know, that's the biggest thing. We're, we're constantly letting people know that it is part of our you know, population and demographic, it's not just a, an aged issue. There are many people who are born with levels of hearing loss, people who experience hearing loss through work um, experiences or through health related or biological experiences. And then obviously there's the one where people have progressive hearing loss from damage or just from the aging process. So it's a quite a, a highly relevant uh, condition, but not very well talked about and not very often discussed comfortably. So we want to raise that awareness to normalize those statistics. The other thing that we try to do uh, very much is provide resources and education and tools to people. So as we know, there's so much information on the internet and everywhere else, but we try to house it in a way that meets people where they're at. So someone who's just thinking about, you know, learn about hearing loss and doesn't want to dive too deep into it, but you know what happens most often? It's somebody I know has hearing loss and they're not doing anything about it and I need to find a way to help them. So I need some information. I need some resources on like, what is hearing loss? What are my options technology-wise? Who do I go to as an audiologist, as a hearing instrument specialist, as a, a family doctor? So we try to provide those frameworks 
And then we try to provide, you know, lived experience perspectives where people can share stories and people feel more comfortable with that um, information. And then there's other resources that we can provide around different types of specific, you know, um, either experiences or technology that people want to dive a little bit more into. So those are the kind of educational pieces. And we do that through online resources, webinars, events and conferences. And then there's programming. So programming is kind of the services and then more direct delivery. Now at the national office, most often those delivery mechanisms are sort of at our local networks in the different communities, whether it's BC, you know, Edmonton, Sudbury, Newfoundland, Hamilton, they often deliver localized education and supports to people with hearing loss. But, you know, it's evolved over the past probably five years where the national office is now participating as a partner in delivering more programs. So yes, um, we believe that it's important to invest in the future. So scholarship programs are some of the things that uh, people, young people entering post-secondary education can have access to. We also work with partners across Canada to deliver employment programs because you know the employment rates for people with hearing loss are, are unacceptable. They're about 35% higher than the general population. So why is that? Well, you start breaking it down, you see some of the realities of why. So we've got to change that trajectory and improve that. And then other areas that we work on, excuse me, that we would be working on would be everything from mentorship programs. We know people that need that one-on-one -on -one support or group mentoring sessions are, are really profound and can really have a huge impact on people's lives. We also have a, a, a social enterprise store where we actually sell, um, you know, um, hearing assistive technology, um, you know, from a trusted provider so that, you know, consumer interests are, are the priority and people can access, have access to the lowest cost and best supported products that are out there as well. So those are some of the, the tips of the iceberg of the things that we do. Well, that's amazing. It's a one-stop you know, click for all things hearing loss related. That's that's absolutely amazing. And it, it helps ease a bit of the overwhelming just feelings that you have when you do get that diagnosis or when you do need to support someone with hearing loss. So that's really incredible. Um, what are some ways that people can get involved with Shaha other than, you know, just following you on social media? Yeah, well, first, like you said, follow us on social media. <laughs> <laughs> and everything else comes to light, as they say. No, but but no, number one, we do have a membership based approach to how we work. I mean, one of the things other than providing, you know, the education, the awareness and the, the, the programs, we try to create a community. We try to connect people that have lived experience to learn from each other and to, like I said, start, start to build a bit of a mobilization around people talking about the issue and saying, hey, you know, I had hearing loss and my friend had hearing loss, my mother had hearing loss, and we found a way to, you know, provide that support to improve and maintain their quality of life because that's the biggest thing. So our membership is probably the easiest approach to connect with us. It's a very low cost um, opportunity to be engaged with us. It provides access to many of the programs, the technology supports and other services at a reduced rate. As a member, it gives them access to ongoing information that we share and different platforms that they can use. And, and we're also looking to increase uh, some of our, what we call our consumer relationship management opportunities where we can create some places where people who just want to talk or listen to others can experience a platform that, you know, they don't have to formalize necessarily their participation. It can be fluid and meet them where they're at, whether it's in their early journey or in later in life. And I think, you know, working with people like you and partners like you to create those platforms like this podcast is one example. Mm -hmm. so, so that's definitely a way they can be involved. We, we do post a newsletter uh, twice a month. And so people without even having to be a member can just go to our website and sign up to be a recipient of our, our monthly newsletter, which has stories, information, updates, tools, and resources. Um, they can go to our website and just, you know, click through the different channel or the different pages and find something that, that meets their interest or meets their need. Or they can give us a call sometimes. Sometimes we, we still get calls, believe it or not. The phone does ring occasionally or, or email us. And 
and we'll try to respond and answer questions to support people as best as possible. That's absolutely amazing. Well, I'll make sure to include all of those links below for everyone to click around and check out. Um, one question that I've had from a lot of my followers is, do you have to be Canadian to become a member to Shahar or be involved with um, the association? Hmm. Absolutely not. I mean, you know, as we talked about, um, um, we're trying to create community and we're trying to make those connections with communities and individuals all over the world. For example, with our Young Adult Network, which maybe we'll talk a little bit about later on. That's a program that is kind of designed specifically to respond to the interests and, and profile of people who are 18 to 35. Um, we've run different uh, learn leadership conferences and we have participation from all over the world uh, that, that, that comes either virtually or in person to participate. We also send some of our delegates periodically over to the International Federation of, of you know, the Heart of Hearing Community, where we are um, a partner and a member of. And that allows us to realize that hearing loss is an international population issue. It's not a Canadian or a third world or a first world issue. It's an international issue. And there's so many commonalities. So we have partnerships with the Ida Institute, international federations. And so we do cross um, share information resources and have individuals that reach out to us either for some of the research stuff that we do, our resources, and just to connect with other community members, particularly when we run events. That's amazing. That's fantastic. And that's, that's really important to kind of expand past Canada, even though you are a Canadian association, it is it's wonderful to see that you're kind of including everyone um, with your incredible resources. So that's amazing. Um, but let's say someone didn't want to become a member, but they did still mm -hmm. want to support in a monetary way. Mm -hmm. How can they go about doing that? Well, you know, as a non-for-profit charitable organization, as I said, we try to keep all access to most of our services that are either at no cost or at very low cost. So people can still register and participate in our webinars, our, our various courses and that as well. Um, but, you know, there is an example where, you know, we do um, engage with donors and corporate sp uh, uh, sponsors, as well as, you know, individuals who wanna make a, a philanthropic contribution to CHA. So we do have, um, you know, channels for them to be able to donate um, or provide even their expertise. If someone wants to, if they have a unique uh, asset or skill and they want to share it with our community, then we equally value that type of connection and opportunity as well. But of course, um, people can donate and, and sponsor, you know, a scholarship program. They can, they can sponsor or donate to our education programs, our mentorship programs. So there are multiple channels for people to make a financial contribution or other contribution if they would like to reach out and talk to us. So again, just, just we're open for conversation. That's amazing. Well, that's fantastic that there's a bunch of different avenues for people to be involved and to participate and to donate because, um, you know, we're all at different levels of life. So it's, it's nice to be able mm -hmm. to contribute in some way if you want. Um, so let's go back to, you mentioned the Young Adults Network. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about that. I do know you guys have a Facebook group specifically for the Young Adults Network. Mm -hmm. What other benefits are there specifically for the 35, 18 to 35? Well, again, it, it, it just raises the reality that, you know, hearing loss is not something that's specifically and only related to once you get past 40. <laughs> it, you know, yeah. it, it, it's a part of life. We should probably have, you know, as we move forward, uh, a teenage uh, a network and maybe even a child network and a parent network because uh, one of the things that is a reality is that you know parents um, of, of children with hearing loss oftentimes don't have hearing loss themselves so that's a, a, an old connection point but specific to the young adult network we call it YAN as you know non-for-profits are always uh, you know uh, always creating acronyms or short ways to kind of get their the messages across this is kind of a national um, you know, component of the CHA membership. And so we felt that you know, there's the general membership, but there was a need to create a, a young person's perspective. And because you know, 
people between the age of 18 and 35, they have unique perspective experience. And oftentimes they're either transitioning into post-secondary school, which has its own unique challenges, um, or they're transitioning out of school into careers or jobs and trying to navigate the, the, the world of careers and transitioning, you know, even moving out of the house and figuring out, well, how do I, what technology is out there to help me navigate my safety and my well-being in my new apartment? And then as people journey through that career development experience, you know, we also know there's many professionals who have hearing loss that aren't necessarily comfortable, you know, promoting um, or, or sharing that. And so it tends to be something they hide. And if they can connect with like-minded and individuals that have a similar lifestyle and life stage experience, again, it's that new crop of leadership, that new openness and that new dynamic around creating a profile of people who have hearing loss that is from the younger generation. So we, we they have their own a bit more of a social connection experience. Um, it's more networking. They do leadership training events. They usually have every second year a summer camp, a summer leadership camp. When, as I mentioned, they bring people in from across Canada or internationally to address personal lifestyle career issues. And we support that. And then I think it's just creating connections because many young people these days are, are mobile and they're either moving across Canada or moving internationally. And if there's a community that they can link up to, what a life changing and game changing experience from what we hear uh, that they have when they move to, you know, even from uh, Ontario to BC and they can connect with the Yang group or Yang uh, Indians from the Cha Yan uh, network out there. So those things are just strengthening community. Awesome. That's amazing. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is World Hearing Day, which is every year on March 3rd. And this year's theme is changing mindsets. Let's make uh, ear and hearing care a reality for all. Now, I know we've already touched on a lot about of everything that Shaha does, but is there anything specifically you are doing to help achieve this goal? Well, I, and thank you, because uh, as we know, World Hearing Day is coming up. Uh, the World Hearing Organization has put it on the map because they know the significance of this issue and they know the growing um, or the increase in the number of people with hearing loss, whether that's just because they're more comfortable telling people about it or where there is actually some impact because of our environments, you know, people wearing earbuds all day long now and things like that. So I think the most important thing is it's put hearing um, loss and hearing health care on the map as a important population issue. So, you know, again, we, we try to raise the awareness around it, rally our networks that might be delivering programs locally in the community. We share resources and we try to, again, just, you know, connect people to opportunities to learn more about it. But for CHA specifically, one of the things that we're trying to do is, you know, elevate hearing health or hearing loss as part of your whole overall wellness experience to make it something that, again, you just don't wait and see it as something that's kind of auditory and, and that you have to deal with. It is a huge part of your overall wellness. Um, it affects your job, your personal relationships, your family relationships, the significant isolation that can often happen when people don't have the confidence or the tools to manage their hearing loss they often fall into very isolated um, experiences, whether that's retracting from their work environment or retracting from social experiences because of the challenges associated with it. So it does take time and resources and supports to help people navigate that journey. And so part of the World Hearing Day allows us to raise that awareness and connect people. And one of the things that Cha is working on with a number of other partners from the hearing healthcare industry that includes the manufacturers, the uh, providers of you know hearing technology through the clinics, professional associations. We've come together as part of the Hearing Health Alliance Canada to try to work and collaborate with the Canadian government to really raise the awareness around how important uh, hearing care is to the wellness of you know, throughout your whole life and try to support the Canadian government to identify a way that we can make it, you know, a part of the 
universal health care program rather than one of the last things people actually check and take care of as part of their health care service. So we're raising that awareness. We're working with the, you know, the various politicians and ministries to understand the statistics, make sure there's strong body of evidence, and also then work, you know, within the sector stakeholders who haven't necessarily collaborated on the issue. How do we provide proper here and health care services and access to it, whether it's the availability of professionals and information or even, you know, um, financially, you know, making sure that the price points for this technology um, is as low as possible so it's not a financial barrier to people. And then constantly working with the partners to make sure the data and the research and information is up to date so we can really, again, like make this a universally comfortable topic to talk about. And that really then comes back to that issue of, you know, what the world he uh, hearing day is about is reducing stigma. You know, we believe the more information and support people have, the more it becomes integrated as part of our healthcare system, then people do something about it. And they respect the fact that it has a huge impact on your life and the quality of life if you don't do something about it. But more importantly, if you do, your quality of life can be significantly better as you move through the phases of life. So that's what we're trying to do. That's absolutely incredible. And thank you so much for sharing all of that information because I really do appreciate all that Shaha is doing. I know when I was first diagnosed, it was one of the first resources that I found and truly it helped me you know, through my journey and get to this point where I am now very confident speaking about my hearing loss. So I'm very, very grateful for this organization. Um, so thank you so much for joining me, Richard. This has been such a pleasure. And yeah, I, hopefully um, more and more people will discover all of the great things that Shaha does. Well, thank you so much, April. And again, you know, you're you're a perfect example of you know individuals that are now beginning to be leaders, and we want to keep supporting and finding ways where we can share your story and and get your passions and your motivations out there. Because as much as work as Cha can do. You know, we know it comes down to oftentimes individuals like yourself who really reflect, you know, the, the the quality of life and the enjoyment of life that people can have when they kind of really embrace it and they learn to manage their hearing loss to improve their quality of life and share it with others. So thank you. And I look forward to continuing our work together. Thank you so much.